Hey guys, this is Ricardo back on the Watch With Us channel. And in for review this week, we have a watch from the brand Manta called The Noble. Now, this watch was released for pre-order about two months ago from the brand. It came in two versions, one in a degradé blue dial. And of course, here we have an opaline silver. A little bit of history on the brand. Manta actually started back in 2016, late 2016, where they released their first watch called the Ocean King. Since then, the brand has dealt with some trials and tribulations. However, they were able to pivot themselves in the right direction. And since then, they've released some pretty nice watches. Uh, they have their Triumph series, they have their Ocean King, they have their Atlas. Um, the brand is really known for a kind of sporty motif in terms of the GMTs they make and the divers they make. But with this watch, the Noble, the brand decided to kind of go in another direction and create something that has more of a dressy slash casual vibe. Now, Dig in with me as we go over the specs of this watch to kind of see what makes this watch kind of land in that dressy casual domain. Okay guys, so the watch comes in at 38.5 millimeters from left to right. You get a lug to lug of 47 millimeters. Your thickness comes in at 9.7 millimeters. The watch comes with a standard size 20 millimeter lug. It comes on this beautiful bracelet, which tapers down from 20 millimeters at the watch to 16 millimeters here at the clasp. Now at the clasp, you have this beautiful micro adjustment right here. The way it works is you pop it down as such. You see those little adjustments there. And what you can do, you can adjust it for a smaller size going that way or for a larger size going that way. There's about five millimeters of play on the micro adjustment and it has about four positions. Here's some more of that clasp. You have Monto right there. Now going to the case back, you have that beautifully signed rotor. In terms of the movement inside of the watch, right now there is an SW300 within the watch. However, the brand is still working on trying to source a movement for these models. Um, they are looking to do about a hundred of each version in this first run. So that's a hundred of the degradé and a hundred of the opaline. And they're trying to source those movements. So if it doesn't end up being the Salida SW300, there is an option also for the ETA 2892 and Another option for a so proud movement within the watch. Now, if we go back here to the front of the watch and we get a little bit closer, you'll see that beautiful dial, opaline dial, opaline silver dial, which depending on the light source will look silver, almost white, or will also have a cream color. Now, if you look at these indices, you'll see the beautifully polished surfaces on them. They really capture the light. Your hands have double-sided loom. So you have loom here at the front portion, but you also have loom here at the back. The hands are polished. The second hands is polished. You also have a polished border here for your date window. And if you look a little bit closer at the indices, you see that they actually 
are cut into the recoat of the watch. With this watch, you also get a beautifully polished bezel, as we see here in the light. You get a signed crown, a mixture of brushed surfaces, as you see here on the side, as well as polished surfaces, as you see here right around the lugs. Here's a little bit more of a view. You really see how those indices pop in the light. A little bit more so you guys can see that case back. Pop the bracelet back off. There's a little bit of writing here around the case back. And just so you guys know, these will be numbered. So if I'd have to guess, your numbering would appear right here in this empty space here towards the bottom. Gonna go ahead and unscrew the crown right here. Unscrewing the crown is actually quite smooth. Winding is even smoother. It You don't even feel like you're winding the watch. There's like no sound. And of course, if you get here to your second position, you're able to change the date. And if you pull out all the way, you're hacking seconds. And that covers it for the specs on the watch. So we'll go ahead and dive into my thoughts on this watch as well as the pricing. So I've had the Montenoble now for about two weeks. And I'm going to preface this by saying, guys, that when this watch was first released, I went ahead and pre-ordered it. And I'm going to tell you why I pre-ordered it. And I'm going to tell you this before I talk about the positives of this watch. So you can kind of understand where my head was at. And when I start going over the individual things that I really liked about this watch, you'll kind of understand where I'm coming from. This is me personally. A lot of you may be in the same boat and may be looking for the exact same thing that I was looking for. And you're kind of just wondering whether this has the quality and has the things that you want. And some of you may just be in a different place and they're just saying, you know what, I kind of want to see what all the fuss is about in terms of of this being a micro brand watch and what is it about this that warrants the price tag. I'm going to pause a second and tell you the price tag on this is $1,600 retail. Nope, I apologies. $1,600 pre-order with a $1,760 retail in terms of once this watch is fully released in November. Now, where I was at when this watch was released, was released for pre-order, was I was looking for a versatile, high quality, go anywhere, do anything watch. Um, my checklist basically included a good amount of water resistance, minimum 100 meters. Yes, I know some of you are like, oh, 50 meters is just okay but I'm just gonna say what I was looking for. We all have our checklist. We all have kind of things when it comes to watches that we don't really wanna budge on. That was one thing I really didn't wanna budge on. So high water resistance, that was one thing. I needed a versatile dial, something 
where I could literally pair this with a ton of different straps and be able to wear this day in, day out at work and kind of give it a new look every time I toss it on a strap, but at the same time, it would work with the strap. So those were some, those were the two main things I was looking for, high quality and versatility. And this was irregardless of brand. So whatever brand was going to make a watch that kind of stood out to me and check those two boxes, I was going to take a look at and, and I was probably going to be purchasing the watch. Now, at the same time, and this is a long running thing for me ever since I became introduced to the brand, I've always wanted a Monta watch. Um, I always found that their watches were made of high quality. Um, I liked the guys behind the brand. I've actually met them in person on numerous occasions. We've had conversations, but there was never anything within their catalog that really spoke to me. So I wasn't going to make the mistake of buying the brand only to regret the model that I bought from the brand within a week or two and end up selling the watch within a couple of weeks. Um, I'm just being honest with myself. So when they came out with the Noble and I saw that it kind of checked, not kind of, I saw that it checked the boxes that I was looking for. Versatile dial, especially with this opaline silver and high quality that I've already seen in their other models, I knew that I was going to pre-order this watch. Scary thing is, I also knew that this watch was probably going to come in for me to review. So there was a pretty high chance that when I got this watch in for review, I was going to find something about it and I was going to be nitpicky because that's just how I am when it comes to spending that much money on a watch. And I would eventually regret the fact that I pre-ordered this watch. And I once again would fall into a boat where I'd be selling this watch within a few weeks. Got the watch in and right off the bat, there are a bunch of positives to this watch that basically solidified my decision to pre-order it. And I'm gonna go down the line of what is about this watch that I really liked. Now, some of you may at this point in time just be saying, you know what, Ricardo is biased. You know what, there will be a time, and this is one of them, where I'll be reviewing a watch that I'll either be buying right after reviewing or that I've already bought. So it's just going to happen. I'm not going to keep myself from buying a watch simply because I know that down the line I may review it. It's not going to bias me. Um, it, that's just the way it is. It, it, it's going to happen. So let's go through those things. First, indices on this watch. The polish that they use and the way that these indices, these hands, even the border of the date window, the way it catches the light, especially when it's on your wrist and you're in daylight, is just amazing. The nearest thing I could compare it to, if you've ever seen those watches where they use um, really high quality diamonds for the indices, really brilliant diamonds that tend to capture the light um, and kind of sparkle, that's basically what this does. Because at the same time that a few indices are sparkling, then you start capturing some new, uh, some other indices, you end up getting this full brilliance all throughout the dial. Cool feature, really love it. I was initially worried about the decision the brand made to make the date on this black lettering on a white background. However, on this model, the Opaline Silver, the white background of the date window actually matches really well with the white of the loom on the indices. So when this is in normal daylight and you're not getting that, that loom, that nice blue loom that you see right here, the loom looks white and it actually matches very well with the date window. Another thing I really appreciate, and I didn't know I was going to appreciate it, 
and I had heard so many things about this class and I was worried about it is the size of the clasp. Um, you'll hear a lot of complaints that this clasp is just too long. One thing I realized when I was wearing this watch, and I probably, I definitely wouldn't have realized it until I actually had this watch in hand, is how beneficial it is to have a longer clasp, especially when you're dealing with a watch of a smaller size. And I'll show it to you guys, especially you'll see it on my wrist and I'll explain. So when you're dealing with a watch that has a longer clasp and it's a smaller watch head, what the longer clasp actually does is it kind of keeps the watch from moving too much, the watch head from moving too much on the top of your wrist. This length keeps, a, keeps the watch from doing a lot of this. The smaller clasp, there'll be a lot of movement here on this side, which in turn means you either get your watch sitting too high here on your wrist or sitting too low. The longer clasp allows this watch to sit really well on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. So those were three of the things that I really appreciated about this watch. And I think those are three things that any person who's looking at the Montenoble, they'll appreciate as well. Just gonna give you guys a little bit more. So overall guys, I have to say Monta really hit this one out of the park. Um, if you're an individual like me who was looking for a versatile watch, looking for a high quality watch who, regardless of the brand, was looking for something like this and isn't really being held back by the idea that they can't spend or they can't see themselves spending that much money on a micro brand, I think you'll really enjoy this watch. I think it checks a lot of boxes. It's a watch I think a lot of individuals are gonna really like if this is what they're looking for. And just overall, I really think Monta did a great job with this watch. But yeah, guys, that's my review of the Monta Noble. I hope you enjoyed it. If you guys have any questions, drop them there in the comment section. If you guys have any comments, um, if you also pre-ordered the watch, if you're on the fence about the watch, even if you're an individual who just can't see themselves spending that much on a micro brand, you know, drop a comment. Let's have a discussion. I'm not going to try to convince you. Um, I'm just going to tell you what's kind of cool about the watch. And, you know, I'll also ask you, what it, what is it that kind of keeps you from spending that much on a micro brand? Um, where's your head at? You know, what are your thoughts? To each his own, I'm all for just a nice open discussion. But like I said, guys, that completes our review of the Monta Noble. And I'll be seeing you soon with the next review on the channel. Hope you enjoyed this one.